Bonjour et bienvenue à la série Focus Poésie sur Zoom. Cette série a été créée par Gabriel Safdi et produite par le Centre des arts de Stansted dans les cantons de l'Est, région qui est sur un territoire traditionnel et non cédé du peuple Abenaki et de la Confédération Wabenaki. Nous sommes reconnaissants et fiers de faire partie d'une longue histoire de création et de partage d'histoires sur ces terres. This poetry reading comes to you from Stansted in the Eastern Townships, the traditional and unceded territory of the Abenaki people and the Wabanaki Confederacy. We're very grateful to be part of a long and proud history of creating and sharing stories on these lands. My name is Shelley Pomerantz, and I'm really delighted that you joined us this evening. As you may already know, the series usually alternates every two weeks between French and English poets, but once in a while, uh, we have an extravaganza and bring the two languages together with an English language poet and a French language poet reading together, which is, of course, the case today. Vous allez entendre André Lévesque Siwi lirant français and Marilyn Dumont reading from her work in English. Uh, dans quelques instants, je vous présenter les deux poètes, mais tout d'abord, j'aimerais passer la parole à Diane Régimbal, programmatrice des, des poètes francophones de cette série. Diane. Alors, euh, bonsoir tout le monde. Je suis extrêmement euh, ravie qu'André euh, Lévesque Siwi ait accepté cette invitation de partager ses chants, sa, sa poésie qui est... Euh, qui témoigne justement de toutes ces années de chant qu'elle fait et que j'ai eu la chance d'entendre à plusieurs reprises. Alors, nous avons été également dans une, un événement de comité femmes du Centre québécois du Pen à Sherbrooke ensemble, où nous avons pu partager nos voix et ce fut fort heureux. Donc, j'ai très hâte de vous entendre. I'm very happy uh, to hear you, uh, Marilyn, tonight, and uh, have a nice uh, time together, Marilyn et André. Merci beaucoup, Diane. Uh, and now to introduce the poets. Marilyn Dumont is a poet, writer, and professor. Her first collection of poetry, A Really Good Brown Girl, won the 1997 Gerald Lampert Memorial Award from the League of Canadian Poets. This collection is in its 15th printing and is a classic of brick books. Other collections include Green Girl Dreams Mountains, the 2001 winner of the Writers Guild of Alberta Stephen G. Stephenson Award, That Tongued Belonging, winner of the McNally Robinson Aboriginal Book of the Year, and Aboriginal Poetry Book of the Year, and The Pemmican Eaters, which won the 2016 Stephen G. Stevenson Award, that's that award twice. Uh, Marilyn Dumont sits on the Faculty of Native Studies and the Faculty of Arts, where she teaches English and Film Studies at the University of Alberta, and she is of Cree and Métis ancestry. Née à Québec, André Lévesque Siwi est chanteuse, poète et conteuse. Elle est l'interprète principale de trois albums, dont Yandawa, elle est membre de la nation Huron Wendat, elle y enseigne la langue Wendat depuis 2010. Elle a publié dans les collectifs Confluence et Comme une rivière en des ruines, et bientôt publiera dans Nous sommes Poésie, avec XYZ. En mars 2021, elle a publié Chant son premier recueil de poésie aux éditions Anenorak. Et euh, je vous souhaite à le, tous les deux le bienvenu. Welcome to both of you. Maybe you both tell us where you are at this very moment. André, vous êtes où exactement? Je suis à Fossambeau sur le lac, euh, qui est au nord-nord-ouest euh, de Wendake, là, à 30 minutes environ de Wendake. Okay. On dirait 40 même minutes de Québec. Le... C'est quand même sur le territoire euh, à Benin. Ah, territoire euh, Wendat. Wendat. OK. okay. Oui. And, and Marilyn, where exactly are you at this moment? Oh, I can't. Marilyn, is your mic open? Your mic isn't open. Sure. I'm in Amaskuchi, Wiskaigen, which is otherwise known as Edmonton. OK. Thank you very much. Um, so the way this worked was Diane invited André And André invited Marilyn. So maybe, peut-être vous pourriez nous dire comment vous vous êtes rencontrés. Tell us a little bit 
I'm going to do a lot of translating tonight, back and forth, so you have to bear with me. But maybe you can tell us uh, how you met Andre and Marilyn, how you, you uh, met each other. Andre, you want to start? Will you commence? I think Marilyn wanted to start, and then I'll, I'll jump in. OK, go well, ahead. Actually, maybe uh, I we have a historical connection, and we found that out uh, the last time I think we visited, or when I was in Wendaki. Um, you may or may not know that the Métis in Alberta basically had no place to hunt. Uh, and my family grew up in road allowance, and uh, which meant that my father had to hunt meat all the time. And if you were Métis, uh, you couldn't show the ranger anything. So um, the Siwi family, my, I don't know how my family found out, that you could get a card which said that you were uh, Aboriginal. All of my family applied for those. And I don't know if my father ever got stopped by the Rangers, but they had that card. And it was a connection back to Andre, uh, the Siwi family. Hmm. Yes. Uh, but of course, you met each other much later. Yeah, much later. But we, we realized that we had that connection the last time as I was in Wendaki. Amazing. Yeah, you even sent me, because uh, Jules Siwi, who, who started this card, Jocelyn Siwi uh, uh, just uh, had a book out on Jules' life. I don't know if you knew about it, but uh, it's called Mon Oncle Jules, Jules, like Uncle Jules. And so mm -hmm. Jules Siwi is my great uncle, the brother of my grandmother. So he's the one responsible for that card. And I, I still have, you had sent me yes. the image of uh, your mother and card mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> crazy and so yes. when did you when did you quand est-ce que vous vous êtes rencontrés toutes les deux pour la première bon. fois en personne alors je vais peut-être partager une photo uh, uh, vous maintenant pour vous montrer voilà un instant partagé donc me voici oui. avec des cheveux foncés <rire> Ça a blanchi depuis. C'était en 2015 au Salon du livre des Premières Nations, euh, présenté par Kwakia Tonk, euh, Louis-Carl picard siwi on voit Jean Siwi ici à droite, et Marilyn qui est juste là, euh, qui est invité. C'était la première édition. It was the first edition where English uh, um, writers would, would be invite, invited. Alors, c'était la première édition. Il y avait Marilyn, vous pouvez voir Duncan Mercredi aussi, qui est autochtone, et euh, Katrina Vermette, qui est aussi métis. Alors, c'était le contexte dans lequel on, on s'est rencontrés. Super, super. Et ça, c'était quand exactement? C'était en, en novembre 2015. Alors, ça fait quand même quelques années, puis vous vous êtes oui, pas vus. Oui, six vu. ans. Oui, et vous ne vous êtes pas vus depuis. Non, on ne s'est pas vus depuis. We didn't see each other since then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's nice that you can see each other tonight. Mm -hmm. Oui, vraiment. I'm very happy you, you accepted, Marilyn. Oh, well, of course I would. You know, the, um, I love your voice. And the, um, I think the last time that I met you, you were talking about a book. So I'm very happy to be here in support of your book. Merci, um, thank you. André, vous allez lire en premier, je pense. On va commencer avec vous. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with André, and then I'll just let you and Marilyn take it from there. I won't interrupt you. I'll just let you uh, keep going, and you're going to alternate. Vous allez alterner, c'est ça? Oui, on fait comme dix minutes, puis euh, parfait. Alors, okay. je, je vais li lire à l'écran en même temps, donc je vais essayer de ne pas trop um, être perdu. Donc, j'y vais. Gariwa Kwan, levez le chant. Let me time me an instant. Levez le chant, relevez le nom, tournez la danse. Renversons les têtes, retournons les cendres, recueillons les visages. Dégageons le faux du vrai, taillons le rétablissement à même le vivant. Festoyons pour la grande restauration. Hoti Hwatsira, il faudra tout miser. Trouvez la corde à faire virer le vent. J'ai un chant dans la gorge, il est né pour les Onwe. Il n'ose pas sortir, il veut vivre en, en silence sa vie de chant. Un chant de silence, un chant d'île, de ces îles de sens que sont nos rêves. 
un chant dans la gorge des rivières de nos rêves, celle que rien n'arrête, que tout célèbre, le chant des gorges heureuses, là où brille l'eau. Corps de lumière, corps de son, là où vibre la vie rêvée, la vie rivière, le chemin qui chante, la route invisible du chant des gorges. Il eût fallu exister à tout rompre pour qu'elle entende son propre chant, faire taire les bruits. Il eût fallu rire à gorge déployée pour que le chant lève, qu'elle saute en sa vie. Il eût fallu aimer à toute allure pour rattraper l'autre jour, ce grand tambour. À chaque jour suffit sa peau, en jouer coûte que coûte, le jour est en bourdeau. Peau d'âme, sa Vénus et son eau, la joute du jour sur la voûte. le son est bon? Oui. Parfait. Je vais continuer. Le chant du poète. Le chant du poète guérit. Il se lève. Il dépasse l'instrument, le met au monde. Chaos accordé à l'ordre du monde devenu hymne. Guérisseur de l'inaudible, périssable devant l'insensible. Nicheur de lieux sacrés. Il nous cherche l'espace et le cré. L'acquiescement à la beauté frais ses chemins, fait vibrer les tambours. Ne pleurons pas le destin des bêtes, pleurons notre manque d'amour. Ta peau, désormais levée autour du cadre de l'arbre, sans sève ni feuille, comme je dois aimer ce que tu as été, pour t'entendre vraiment et t'honorer avec justesse. Ma voix sur ta peau, Rêve en douceur, en douleur, en couleur. Comme si tu respirais à nouveau, comme si le souffle se souvenait de la souplesse de tes tissus, de, du battement de ton cœur. En poignant tes tendons d'une main, je te sens courir à nouveau, battre le rythme de tes anciens pas. Ton cœur vient jusqu'à moi dans les champs que tu me souffles inlassablement. Tu réponds encore au froid et à la chaleur, tu me racontes. Et si je dois sans cesse remercier ta vie, si je trouve le feu, je te réchauffe. Entends ton ardeur, ta poésie, ta grandeur. Sinon, je sens ta blessure. La fin de tes courses en forêt, la fin de ton air chaud dans le froid, la fin des tiens et ton silence. Je ne dois pas vouloir que ce soit autrement. Je te dois respect dans le temps et l'espace et me rappelle aussi la finitude de mon corps. Mais ton infinie complainte, tambour, ô oh tambour, donne un sens à cette finitude, sens de vie, de lien, d'amour, d'éternité. Merci, tambour. Pour faire de grands humains, le battant de parole de l'ancienne aux jeunes, relayé par le biais de l'oralité, cette voix des airs royales qui se perpétue dans un fracas de mots chuchotés au travers des passages de l'histoire, des passages oubliés de l'histoire. Obligation sans épargne, sans phare ni oubli, tout y passera trois fois en boucle. Ainsi, écouterons-nous quand elles auront parlé. Rincez les bouches, rincez les bouches pour la grande parole. Lavez les mains, lavez les mains pour la grande écriture. Centrale des mers concentrée au camp en feu, près des voies de fer, des voies de bois. Oui, je le jure, je le veux. Oui, 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 we are the world, we are the children. Oui, 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 yes, we can, no weak end. Hatiyontaskehen, les ancêtres. J'ai perdu ton savoir. 
Mes yeux ne savent plus lire ni le vent ni le soleil, mes mains s'abîment au moindre froid. Je crains l'aridité de ma mère. Je critique même la lenteur de mes sœurs. Les vents. Je ne tends plus l'oreille comme toi jadis quand ta vie en dépendait. Je bobine des rengaines de mots comme tu tressais la corde de chanvre, rengaines de rancune, dégaine d'amertume qui m'endorment pendant que tu chantes au loin le vent. Ma dénature en pleine vie, mon nez ne sait plus sentir les résines guérisseuses, ni le présage d'excréments d'ours. Comment aiguiser l'odorat qui assure la survie? Je dois ma vie grâce à tes sens aiguisés. Je suis descendu de l'arbre désormais, mais... Moi aussi, je survis. J'ai le tronc comme eux, coupé, la nature morte. Les épices qui roulaient dans ta bouche sont ma gourmandise. Je suis autre. Moi aussi, je suis humain. Je vis, je respire, mon cœur bat. En aiguisant l'esprit, mes sens se sont émoussés. Mon savoir est un maigre filet d'eau. Malgré tout, je sens ton souffle et la finesse de tes pas. Viens chuchoter à mon esprit. Viens, depuis ces temps immémoriaux, viens me dire ce que j'ai oublié et qui est tapis au fond de moi, comme le grand chant de la nature plein et entier. Viens que je devine à nouveau et reconnaisse l'esprit de tous les règnes, l'esprit de toutes mes relations. Ouvre mes sens que je laisse entrer au lieu de sortir pour prendre, que je sois vu et que je vois enfin. Touché, entendu, goûté, senti. Que je touche, que j'entende, que je goûte, que je sente. Par tous les esprits du monde qui m'entourent, je ne suis pas hors nature. Elle et moi tournons ensemble, nous tissons la grande toile du monde. La danse ronde, toutes nos relations. Hatiyon daskehen, ahiehuatira, yaton wes. Je reviendrai demain. I will be back tomorrow. Je vais tout laisser en plan. Je reviendrai demain. Ramasser les petits fruits. Que tout mûrisse, que rien ne meure en vain. Car tout meurt, mais pas toujours en vain. Je vais dormir jusqu'au dernier rêve. I will sleep till the last dream. Me lever et savourer le jour. Après, on recommencera notre galère. Oui. Pour ne pas oublier, so we don't forget, toute une terre à nommer, avec la bouche humanisée, toute une terre à rincer à la source, toute une terre à reconnaître le ventre remué. Pour ne pas oublier, so we don't forget, ce que nous sommes, who we are, ce que l'on doit semer, what we shall plant, ce que l'on peut récolter, what we can harvest, ce que l'on doit protéger de source, what we have to protect from the source, ma semblable, She is like me. Sourcement mes semblables. They are like me. Humains de source. Mes frères et mes sœurs. Ma mère et mon père. Toutes mes relations. Ce corps. Et. And the last one, le dernier, je pense. Hmm. Vulnérable. Fracasse la carapace des intentions, déleste les gestes appris. Fouille les restes de printemps en ton automne pour qu'émerge, éclate et brille jusqu'à aveugler tes prétentions, le germe de ta survivance et ta soif de souffle. Le temps de saliver la sève, la sacrée sève, wah, ta arbre témoin. Premier manifeste messager aux élans promesses, au redressement qui ouvre chakra cœur de bois, exprime ta lignée, qu'on imprime des mots alignés pour nous rappeler la rondeur de toute chose. Enseigne-nous l'offrande. Il faudra lire en boucle jusqu'au centre du monde, à go, 
ni le mépris. In the name of good, ne blesse plus grande tortue. À toi, mon ami. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I have a new collection that will come out in 2023. And um, I've been working on research about my family here in Alberta. And uh, because the men are easier to trace because mostly Indigenous women were, were not uh, named, um, I traced the Dumont, uh, Dumont's back in Alberta five generations. And um, so we started out in 1790, um, Jean Dumont, who is the brother of Gabriel Dumont, the famous Gabriel. Um, and they were brothers. And so Jean Baptiste Dumont signed on with Edmont Edmonton House in 1790 and proceeded to supply the, the forts, uh, Fort Edmonton, uh, Fort Pitt, and other places with meat. Um, other generations, um, it seemed like became increasingly uh, kind of encroached to the point where my family had to give up uh, the Buffalo Brigades and, um, and had to either take homestead or scrip, which basically were instruments of dispossession for the Métis. Um, so I've written about that, and um, and so this this collection really is has been inspired by that, and uh, the collection is called "For Those Who Are Not Here," and I've taken uh, the title from uh, Natalie Diaz line, <clears throat> where she says, "Manhattan is a Lenape word. If you are where you are." then where are those who are not here, not here? My kin left few storied landlines to read, fewer maps for we yet inherited landless, we who have not had, for those who are not here. For those who are not here, this talking land's throat, cut across, cut line, cutthroat story for the ones not here. Not hearing, not holding, stories that were not to be carried. The fire starters all left behind. Hear and hold the stories that were not supposed to be carried forward for those who are not here. Excuse me. One of the things that um, most of our popular history or, or known his taught history anyways, it, it doesn't teach us very much about Indigenous women. And um, uh, many of the journals of, you know, explorers, whatever, um, basically, uh, you know, said things like, without an ind Indigenous woman on your trip, it would likely fail. Because the women wore the ticket to the language, to the relations, to the medicines, to the food, to the clothing, um, and also knowing the land. So most of the babies that were born in the West were, uh, were brought to this world by indigenous midwives. Um, there's a word in here which is called, which is we weep son, and it basically describes a swing that we used to have in our house, and it's just a rope that um, kind of forms a shape like this from corner to corner of the room, and then you wrap flannel in there and you put a baby in there. And it's over your bed so that at night the baby wakes and you just have to go like this and uh, <laughs> to rock the baby back and forth. So it's, that's called a wee weep song. 
a nation of indigenous midwives delivered this country. Brent, bent brown women singing water circles, rain suckling, minnow threading, babies licked to sleep, swinging, threading through we weep on, flannel wrapped babies suspended by ropes strung corner to corner of the room within easy reach of a brown hand lulling awasis to sleep. Dark woman circles, brooding litters, women with strong minds and swings across their beds. Suckle minnows to sleep through water veins, water webbed, suckled minnows threading through swoop fluid diving, brown hands massaging the belly of the motherland, steeping wild raspberry tea for the cubbing labor. <clears throat> Um, there's a poet uh, which I really like, and uh, their name is Kai Miller, and um, and I got this idea from Kai Miller and his collection of poetry, which is called "The Cartographer Tries to Map a Way to Zion." This is called "The Colonial Gaze." Every language, even yours is a partial map of the world. The colonial gaze deserves a pair of thick Indian affairs glasses, generic black frames and heavy lenses correcting tunnel vision, the blindness outside its own centering. It needs to think outside the empire, now quickly exposed as narrow and irrelevant. Erase the whiteboard of words to discover, to pretend it's uninhabited. Verbs in the infinitive, to colonize, to enter someone's house and start renting out the rooms. The colonial present, to civilize, to construct the, the imaginary abject savage. I am starved for language that doesn't erode me. Erase me as terra nullis in a couple of swift syllables. The colonial haze, folded blind, too long leaning on tropes of indigenous deficiency and its zealous modern phantoms progress. Enter the ghosts that never leave the table, their gluttonous colony. Um, so I wrote this in response to, um, well, I guess a couple of things. One is just hearing <laughs> all of these pretend Métis come out of the woods. Um, and then also um, uh, something about my, uh, my great grandfather on my mother's side, who was actually the illegitimate son of Chief Factor Rowan, and Chief Factor Rowan was the czar of the prairies, and the Chief Factor at Amuskwachewaskigan at Edmonton House for many, many years. Um, and my great grandfather is not the only illegitimate child of his. Um, this is called We Are the Half Kin. We are the half kin up to Gosan the half son of the Cree, who say we're half empty, while settlers see us half full, half skinned, ha half measured, measured more than once, half human, half devil, treacherous halves that might separate, halves that might turn on the whole. My relatives, interpreters, ventriloquists, Chapan and Nomoshompan, both conjuring English from Cree for Indian agents who saw the world as notched pronouns of ownership, territory, and trade. And my matriarchy descends from Fort Pitt, the union of the country marriage of a la façon de pays, Chief Factor Rowan and Marguerite Mondion. 
Marguerite Mondillon's illegitimate son, my great grandfather, interpreter, Francois Dufresne, into the world in Fort Pitt, where Edouard Dufresne adopted Francis. Ventriloquists of English, half speaking, half acting, speech acting the English, throwing the dice of the language on the table and hoping it rolls in favor of the Cree signatories. Um, <clears throat> I'll read this one, I guess. I wasn't going to, but um, Margaret Harriet was a woman that uh, was on, she was a, a non-native non woman, and she was on a trip with some men into the Rockies and um, had a newborn. And um, she slept with her newborn and smothered it. And of course, the woman was out of her mind and she went running into the woods and she was never found. So this is called the faults, the faults of motherhood. New spruce shoots and moss breath, an absence of mistakes in motherhood would make us all holy. Margaret Harriet on horseback through the Rockies, star flowered days through nodding trillium, her young daughter and son, needy limbs competing for her, mind unlatched, uncapped. Her long train of faults dragged behind her. She covets her infant at night, sleeps bare heavy in hibernation, nuzzles his scent close, but through night terror uncovers him, limp, lifeless, under her weight. Her large body squeezing the light out of him as she dreamt of life, panicked, she prays for a small wind to blow back into him, his tiny corpse a stone weight in her bed now. Distraught, she flees, careening through the rough spruce and black fur, her feet bare and bleeding, catching on torment, her nightshirt shredded dead leaves and branches, her legs choke cherry stained and scratched, her breasts molting, remembering his smell, his suckling sour mouth to, her, to face herself, heartwood would be pierced. Acts like hers are unspeakable violations, a caveat on motherhood, fused with infanticide, the fault of motherhood. She contemplated careening through the dark wood before, being swallowed by what accidents could deliver. I'm just gonna stop there. Wow, thank you. Well, je vais, uh, je vais aussi changer uh, les textes que, que je voulais lire parce que je vais rebondir un peu sur uh, ce que, ce que les textes de Marilyn m'inspire. J'en ai un que j'ai appelé Le ventre du monde, The Belly of the World. Je n'ai pas eu d'enfants, mais je les ai tous. Je n'aurai jamais fini d'accoucher de cet enfant à venir, celui qui saura être joie me nourrira de tendresse et d'espoir. Ces enfants-là ne finissent pas de naître. Tel l'affaissement du désir de vivre, l'affaissement du ventre du monde est agonie. Agonie de l'espoir et de la portée du geste. Et puis pour toutes les filles, Une pensée aussi pour les hommes qui manquent à l'appel. Trace. Une île, un archipel, une fille, des filles qui manquent à l'appel. Absence sur fond de terreur nocturne que personne n'entend. Loin des catastrophes et des scandales passagers. 
Dans la mémoire et le territoire, tout s'inscrit, tout s'écrit en oralité et en trace. Remontons la piste, retraçons le geste, l'appel manqué, la loyauté ignorée, l'histoire trompée. Et euh, le texte dont je parlais au début, euh, que j'ai un peu transformé en, en chant, je vais lire le texte, mais peut-être euh, fredonner quelques quelques strophes. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille, pendant que tu joues sous les décombres de la mort, dans le carré de cendres, entre les ruines des grands tabous, des gestes ratés et des mots ravalés. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille, pendant que tu te rebelles solitaire, que tu manges ta folie, que tu te noies dans l'amour flou, pensant la blessure éternelle que les autres ont traînée avant toi. Traînée par ceux et celles avant toi, traînée par ceux et celles avant toi. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille, du matin au soir et la nuit encore, je veille, Décelant la souplesse de ton esprit pétrifié, à l'affût des vagues à l'âme du corps. Je cherche le timbre posté derrière ta voix éraillée, sous le voile du palais. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille, pendant que tu songes au pire, à l'oreille du bois brûlé, pendant que tu pleures, beau temps, mauvais temps, trahi par les oracles d'hier et les horoscopes du jour. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille. L'abandon à l'est, l'humiliation à l'est, au grand nord de tes frilosités, et au sud de ta timidité, et au sud de ta timidité. Je veille, mon enfant, je veille, comme on a veillé sur moi, dans l'ombre, à distance, en prière, des yeux aux couleurs de celles qui voient, des veilleuses infatigable et insoumise, vouée à sauver des cœurs d'enfants. Et c'était un texte pour ma tante Monique qui a, après la mort de ma mère, vraiment veillé sur moi. My aunt Monique, this text was for her. Uh, she asked, she, when my mother died, I was nine, and with my brothers, she would uh, come during the weekend and Take us into the woods. <rire> et j'ai nous amenait dans le bois. J'ai su après j'ai vu la grande sagesse de ma tante qui savait que la forêt allait nous guérir en partie. Hein, she knew, but I realized it later on that uh, my aunt knew that the forest, the wood would would uh, heal us, and that's what it did. And each time I go back, this is, I feel that. And I have um, uh, a song that I wrote that I'm just going to slam, I, I guess. It's a blues. It's very bluesy. It's called ABC Decolonize. <laughs> It's in English. Uh, leather and feathers, singers and drummers. Are we just what you hear? Antlers and dancers, catchy dream catchers. Are we just what you see? What are we in your eyes? Will you be our allies? So carry no more lies. See the indigenous side. A, B, C, D, colonize. Spiritual leaders, wiser grandmothers, are we just what you feel? Long storytellers, hunters and beaters, are we just what you, we do? What are we in your eyes? Will you be our allies? So carry no more lies. See the indigenous side. A, B, C, D, colonize, spell out, indigenize. Boarding survivors, healing in circles, we have faith and pride. Critical thinkers, lawyers and doctors, we are brave and wise. Elders and teachers, tradition bearers, we bond nationwide. Writers and speakers, all life protectors, we will tell and rise. What are we in, you, in your eyes? Will you be our allies? So carry no more lies. See the indigenous side. See the Indian genocide. 
A, B, C, decolonize, spell out, indigenize. And a last one, uh, because you spoke about the language, and, and since I teach the language, it, it moved me. So I wrote, j ai, j ai, ben maintenant je parle en français, parce que c'est pour les francophones aussi, mais j'ai écrit un texte euh, suite à, comme sou, c'est souvent le cas pour les textes euh, engagés, euh, c'est après des réflexions ou des interactions avec des gens, des questionnements, il y en a, il y en a un qui, qui me disait que sa mère l'avait toujours appelé avec un nom affectueux en français, et, euh, et, et il demandait à tout le monde... Euh, ce nom-là dans les langues autochtones pour pouvoir, euh, pour pouvoir se sentir, je ne sais pas, plus guerrier, semblait-il me dire. Et moi, je lui, je lui rappelais que sa mère, c'était en français qu'elle qu l'appelait comme ça, donc il y avait cette vibration d'amour pour lui dans sa langue, mais euh, c'était plus, euh, plus coloré, c'était plus, euh, euh, je sais pas, plus guerrier que de, que de prendre une langue autochtone. Alors, j'ai écrit ceci. Le festin des vivants. Ohiwawenda. Les langues autochtones ne sont pas à prendre, elles sont à apprendre. Pensons à elles comme à des êtres vivants qu'on veut fréquenter un peu, beaucoup, souvent. Savoir ce qu'elles voient, ce qu'elles ont à dire. La langue Wendat est une femme qui s'adresse au on, oui. Je, tu, il, elles, on. Toi et moi, l'autre et moi, vous deux, lui et lui, elle et elle, nous tous, avec ou sans toi, vous tous, elles, toutes, eux et elles, sans toi qui féminise tout à moins d'une explication venue des légendes, qui vieillit en cercle et rattrapant le jour de sa naissance. La langue Wendat est une femme qui prend soin des Onwe, qui voit les couleurs par ses sœurs, ciel, cendre, ocre, yaron, hya, ohien, ohien, hra, wenhta, fleurs de courge et de canderge, atyarenta, atoka, otsitsa, nommant l'aîné en premier, je suis sa sœur, elle est ma sœur. Les langues autochtones ne sont pas à fendre, elles sont à défendre, elles ne sont pas à vendre, elles ne sont pas un one night, one night stand ou une histoire d'un soir. Plus de 60 langues autochtones sont parlées en ce pays. 60 indigenous languages are spoken in this country. Orite, 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 comme, comme ces forêts anciennes et ces 3 milliards d'oiseaux qu'on n'entend plus. Orité, la tourte. Orité, 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 comme glacier, tortue, rainette, caribou, ours blanc, sanguinaire, aïe des bois, yanyon, chien, yaronta, yandiawish, awenrore. Orité, 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 que le désir de les revoir se lève pour être ému. Un mot à la fois et nous pourrons nous rencontrer sur notre territoire poétique. Et quand vous rêverez dans nos langues, vous saurez qu'il y a plus à recevoir qu'à prendre. Osha, osha, on dit nyechta, on dit nyechta et ouhti. Osha, osha, on dit nyechta, on dit nyechta et ouhti. Yon ouhwe, ahye yi asya, yon ouhwe, ahye yi asya, desa. Oh, that was, that was just beautiful. Pesa. Love it. <laughs> Thanks to you. Um, <clears throat> what happened to my family is that um, we ended up, um, as I say, losing land to instruments called Homestead and Métis Scrip. Um, till we eventually ended up living on what was called road allowance. And we moved to this little town and lived on road allowance for quite some time, just in a little, just a little shack. I mean, they, they were not, couldn't call them houses. And um, someone tried to burn our house down, our shack down. And uh, so my father went and bought an old schoolhouse. And that schoolhouse was skid from out in the prairie uh, into a field uh, of a family that was uh, sympathetic with us. And that old schoolhouse set up in blocks just in the middle of that field. I don't know how long, maybe four or five years. And then my father bought um, some uh, property in the town and moved the house there. 
But this, this is really an homage to him um, and it's called Moorings. When the heavy horses loosen the one room schoolhouse from its moorings, did you lean into that room where your children's lives might sprout? Recall your own brief time in a classroom before following your father to work. When you chose the schoolhouse, did you imagine your 10 kids sitting at attention before a teacher at the blackboard? Did you hear the echo of her reciting the English alphabet, the pointer striking the chalkboard in unison with the enunciation of the Roman orthography, A for Ambrose, B for brown skin, C for Cree, sounds stinging your ears to attention. Did you see your children writing their names in fluid strokes? alongside your signature, rehearsed and jagged, your hands more practice at steadying a chainsaw, your size 13 fingers dwarfing any blunt pencil. Did you see your children handing in their assignments, walking to the blackboard without fear, reading aloud, their hands shooting up to answer first? A for Ambrose, B for brown skin boy, C for Cree, the English stinging your ear. Did you imagine them speaking perfect English, their Cree wiped from the blackboard? Did you imagine transporting a colonial world across the prairie for us? Um, both my parents spoke Cree, um, but of course they wanted us to succeed <laughs> and learn English. And uh, so it's been a, a great uh, grief of mine to, to not be able to speak Cree fluently. I speak a little bit of Cree, but not much. And um, I took a, a Cree immersion course a couple years ago. And it was so wonderful because it was my body had memories of sounds that I didn't know were there until I started um, learning Cree. Um, so I should tell you what some of these Cree words are. Um, Nistamina means me too. Um, Nehiawe win is Cree, the Cree language. Um, Nigawi is uh, mother. Notawi is father. Nimoshom is grand, grandfather and Nokom is grandmother. Uh, Nimeton is my mouth. Mr. Guan is my head. I think that's probably it. So it's called I Come Sounding After. Nistamina. Nistamina. Sweet syllables recalled summoned from a dormant motherly shoot, ripening its way to my larynx, st strung to my sound belly, aural memory loosening a sound root, stretched over dusty tongue and ear, pulled together, no sound alone. Union of larynx and lips, sounding out our Nehiawe ne win body song, through our moose stew and bangs, our dry meat and baked bannock, our bone marrow soup. I come sounding after Nigawi, Notawi, and some swimming of her brother's laugh splashing my face. I come sounding after Nomushum, Nokom, Nistamina, Nimuton, Mistiguan. This tongue loosens delights, lights, enlightens, oral memory arriving home from a long time ago. Nagawi, thank you for birthing me. Notawi, thank you for never leaving me a sound alone. Nistamina comes from you both, recalling sound sliver, 
Mi stamina, my mother combs my hair. My father tickles my feet. Mi stamina, my brother teases me. Mi stamina, they call me back through kin vibrations. Faces envelope me in the electric energy of affinity, opening the front door, beat the guay. I am a ventriloquist of my parents, no com ni moshumban. My lips, tongue, and larynx thread sound of the same mother tongue, stringing mista to mina. I'm tired. Mistamina. I'm hungry. Mistamina. I'm lonely for your sounds. Um, I think I'll just read one more um, and then. Actually, what I'll do is I'll read, I'll read a poem from uh, Pemmican Eaters. Um, and uh, maybe I will ask uh, Shelley, what's a favorite? So what about berries? Oh, okay. beautiful. Huh? Um, or beads or berries, the beads ones are also beautiful. Okay. It's up to you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, um, didn't have this planned, of course. Um, let's see. Eat beats oh, is oh. nice too. You want me yeah. to take the page? Um, with second sight, she pushes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sitting close to light, falling through a window, glancing down a needle along a thread to the center of a bright bead is her belief in petal, stem, and leaf. She directs a long, thin needle, picks one tiny seed bead after seed bead after seed from a saucer until she has drawn a long white string with her fingers at the end of a needle. Her fingers nudge their seeds side by side, looping their weight into a petal laid flat against the fabric nap, each bead pressed against the cloth by the thumb and forefinger of her left hand, while the thumb and forefinger of her right hand plumb the unseen side of the fabric with another needle and thread. And with second sight, she pushes the needle and thread up precisely where her eye wants to meet it on the surface of the fabric. Then down between each bead by seed bead seed, over, and over, repeated, this gesture petal takes patient shape. The bead's color makes no sound, but it is cranberry, moss, and fireweed. It is also wolf willow, sap, and sawdust, as well as chickadee, magpie, and jackrabbit. A bead is not simply dark blue, but Saskatoon blue. And it's not merely black, but beaverhead black. And it's not just a seed bead, it's a number 11 pearlized bead, or a number 10 two cut glass bead, or a number eight French white heart. The fabric weightless, supple through her lissom fingers, the wax thread yielding, and the bright beads obedient as good children, lining up in straight rows inside the white outline of a petal. But as she shifts to light falling on her beadwork, her thoughts turn to stem, how it attaches to petal and leaf. Slim stem, bloodline to root and black to leaf. And she the link like stem from rich root to sprouting leaf, her children. She, this link holds each bead berry. Each bead berry a thought each bead berry a word in prayer for her son, for her daughter, for her grandchild. She considers blue beads as holding a piece of the sky reflected in berries. Her same fingers gather Saskatoon's draping from branches bent blue with fruit and releases them to the lard pail tied to her waist. They're dropping the sound of all small drumming in the pail her same fingers scoop Saskatoon's 
the fruit of feasts from a bowl in the sweat, that place of gathering self and others back to womb, that bulb of life in her mother. Each bead of birth she senses as light grows faint as thread. Each bead of birth she sees her eyesight finest thread. Each bead of birth she listens, each bead sewn down a word in prayer. So yeah, let's stop there. So thank, thank you very much. Oh, you've made somebody very happy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just love that. <laughs> so so precise and so beautiful and hold on I'll open my camera here thank you both merci à vous deux c'est vraiment uh, quel, quel joie quel plaisir de vous entendre just to hear you together too it's so nice almost as good as being in person with you, the two of you almost, um, almost but not quite we're getting there um just a, a few questions, uh, just to close. Um, um, Marilyn, you've been writing poetry for a long time, but I wonder how you discovered poetry and where poetry comes from in your culture. Um, well, it doesn't really come from the Cree culture, but it's the closest thing to oral literature. So um, I think that's probably why I was drawn to it, but the other, I, I was always drawn to poets. They always spoke to me in a way so directly, so clear um, that I was always drawn to poets. And I just felt like these are my people. Even though I was born in a family, I don't feel like it was for my people. My people were poets. And um, yeah, and in some ways I think it chose me. I mean, that's just the person I am. Right, it's. Uh, I think the poets listening will understand you um, about the family of poets. That's a lovely way to put it. Et André, vous, est-ce que vous avez découvert la poésie ou est-ce que la poésie vous a découvert? Je pense que euh, les deux. <laughs> Mais certainement, ce que Marilyn a dit, c'est exactement mon sentiment, c'est-à-dire que j'ai trouvé chez les poètes euh, ma famille. Je, je, je l'ai dit souvent, euh, les, les, les écrivains, mais, mais particulièrement les poètes, c'était vraiment des gens avec qui je, je me sentais à la maison. Alors, uh, euh, Marilyn, mon père, euh, mais, just to translate for Marilyn, yes. Marilyn André is saying the same thing for her. She always yeah. felt that it was part, she was part of the family of writers, but more particular poets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, this new book that, that just came out, actually, maybe here, Nous sommes poésie, We are poetry, mm -hmm. put out by Jean Desi at XYZ, that was just out. Um, it's discussions, you know, about poetry. So, mm, so lovely. many people. So some of them are, are singers or, or um, uh, filmmakers and, and uh, writers as well, or musicians. Mais, mais what is common is, is that uh, poetry is part of their life. Mm -hmm. Et je dis souvent que c'est pas, on n'a pas besoin d'être écrivain ou même de lire beaucoup pour être poète. C'est une façon d'être. It's a way of being. Mm -hmm. You don't need to read or even write to be a poet. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Puis j'aimerais aussi vous vous parler de de votre langue wendat que vous enseignez, mais comment est-ce que vous l'avez appris vous? Mais le wendat, euh, euh, c'est une langue qui, qui n'a pas été parlée depuis 150 ans au moins. Mmh. Donc, euh, c'est certainement même pas ma grand-mère qui l'a parlé. Euh, moi, je l'ai appris par notre linguiste, Megan Lukaniek, qui, euh, avec le projet de revitalisation de la langue Wendat, parce qu'il y a même plusieurs années, euh, des gens Wendaki l'ont ont demandé euh, aux au grands chefs et au conseil qu'on s'y penche, parce qu'il y a... Un des plus grands héritages d'une langue autochtone écrite, c'est celui de la langue, ce que les Français appelaient Huron, mais que nous avons toujours appelé Wendat. Alors, à partir de ces manuscrits, particulièrement celui de Pierre Potier, du, du, le plus près de nous, là, 18, euh, ouais, 18e siècle, euh, à partir de ça, elle, on reconstruit des mots, etc. Donc, j'ai appris par elle, mais on n'est pas encore au stade où on est des locuteurs courants, on est des, des apprenants enseignants. Mais 
Et ce qui est le plus important quand les gens me demandent pourquoi alors vouloir revitaliser la langue, c'est que c'est toute la vision du monde. Quand j'entendais, when I was hearing Marilyn saying, talking about the beads and, and the words, you know, for, for the colors, it's the same thing when you go back to a language, even if you don't speak it fluently, at least you know all it reveals, you know, like for us, black is uh, coal. And that's how we'd call the Jesuits, you know, the coal people. <laughs> oh. Yahtzee has Tatsi. Voilà. And, and Marilyn, you, have you always included Cree words in your poetry, or is that something that's been huh? happening to you more and more? I, I, I guess I did in my first book. I mean, and the, the other thing that, I, of course, draws me to language is that I grew up in a bilingual home. I mean, bilingual meaning that my parents spoke Cree to each other and we heard it all the time, but they didn't speak it to us. And of course, you know, any visitors we had, um, you know, were Cree speakers. And so it was always, I always heard it, but um, so I think that, I think that was part of just the kind of curiosity, I think, about language, but, um, But also, I have interpreters in my history, my family history, right? So, on my mother's side, and and I'm not sure if this has to do with Cree culture or if it just had to do with my family. But my family loved uh, puns and just you know, like just playing around with language all the time. Hmm. There's a question from Patrick Coleman who says um, uh, he'd like to hear more about the oral dimension of your work and how much you think it could be incarnated in the written page or how much is lost? Yeah, there's so much that's lost. I mean, when I look at the work of Maria Campbell and what she's done with a book called uh, People, The Road Allowance People, I mean, there, that's a really good example, I think, of oral orature, oral literature transcribed on the page. But she's all, she also has a CD with it, so you hear, um, you know, there's someone narrating and you hear fiddles in the background and people laughing. And so it feels very, it feels very oral storytelling like. Um, I don't know if it, I would ever go that much further other than just saying that I think that's, I mean, I think it's, it is one of the closest uh, forms to oral literature. So um, I think I was drawn to it for that too. André? Oui, c'est certain qu'une que grande partie est, est perdue. Euh, moi, j'ai osé mettre trois de mes chants dans, dans mon recueil, donc euh, je pense que les gens le sentent quand même. Là. Ils peuvent, je les invite souvent à, à même le chanter, même s'ils ne connaissent pas l'air. Euh, mais si, si je reviens avec « Nous sommes poésie », ils ont voulu garder cette idée d'oralité en, en gardant la question que Jean nous posait, parce que chacun, on allait chez lui dans sa cabane dans le bois. C'était un peu le traitement que tout le monde se ramassait là, mais et, chacun son tour. Donc, ce livre, c'est le résultat de rencontres qui ont vraiment eu lieu dans sa cabane dans le bois. Et donc, Jean pose la question et nous répondons. Donc, la forme orale est conservée et on, on sent vraiment la différence. On, on sent, on sent l'intimité entre les gens. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marilyn André was just saying that in the way this book, it was collected as people went into a cabin in the woods to meet with oh. the people, put it together and spoke to him, each one individually. And she says that really is transmitted in the book. You can, you can feel the oral transmission through it that way. Yes, the, he kept the questions, you know, so Jean is asking us and then we answer and he and then he rebounds, so you, you have the thread of the discussion that's yeah. there. Moi, j'avais une question pour vous, André, sur l'accent, l'accent de votre langue, de la langue Wendat. Ça, ça doit être très difficile de savoir qu'est-ce qui était vraiment l'accent. Mais en fait, oui et non, c'est sûr qu'on ne le saura jamais, parce qu'il n'y a plus de Wendat vivant qui... En fait, il y a eu une coupure dans la transmission. Par contre, quand Marius Barbeau est venu donc en 1911 à Wendake, ce qu'il appelait la jeune Lorette, il n'y avait plus de docteur, mais il est allé l'année d'après ou l'année d'avant en Oklahoma avec les Wyandots qui sont nos cousins. Et il y avait une locutrice, donc on a des enregistrements de cette mmh. langue, qui okay. était une langue parente. Puis sinon, ben, on se fie euh, vraiment au, euh, au Haudenosaunee, euh, de toutes les langues euh, de la même famille iroquoienne que la nôtre. Là. 
just to translate for you, Marilyn, um, André is explaining that even though, because the Wendat language wasn't spoken, was lost for 150 years, there was this researcher, Marius Barbeau, who went and recorded different people speaking uh, languages. And, and he had a recording of, uh, of a woman in Oklahoma who spoke a related language. And that's how, because I was asking her how they know what the accent is like since nobody- Oh my goodness. That's, that's fascinating. Amazing. It's really fascinating. Uh, si vous avez d'autres questions, if anybody else has a question, uh, sinon, uh, je pense qu'on va terminer là. I think we're going to wrap it up uh, now. I just want to um, say thank you to, well, first of all, to our two wonderful poets. It's wonderful to bring you together in this way that you can at least see each other and read to each other. Um, J'aimerais vous dire que vous trouverez le livre Chant de André Lévesque-Sioui chez les éditions Anenorak. And Marilyn Dumont's poetry is published by Brick Books and ECW Press, and she has a new book coming out this spring. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, there's some uh, comments there, des gens qui vous remercient. People are, are thanking you in the chat if you want to have a look. J'aimerais remercier l'équipe qui produit cette série, Diane Régimbal, programmatrice des événements en français, Gabriel Safdie, fondateur de la série et programmateur des poètes anglophones, Luce Couture, directrice de la programmation au Centre des arts de Stansted, Sharda Gupta, coordonnatrice de la série, et mon nom est Shelley Pomerantz. I'd like to thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, I hope to see you in one month's time on March 15th at 7 p.m., when our featured guests will be Mi'kmaq poets Shannon Webb Campbell and Douglas Walborn Goff. And before we sign off, I'd like to give the final word to Gabriel Safti. Le dernier mot à Gabriel Safti. Oh, est-ce qu'il est là? Gabriel, oui, il est là. <laughs> Hello, here we are. Okay, first I want to say that uh, I think it's a very heart, really, truly really heartwarming to think that the, the two of you, uh, Marilyn and Andre, uh, have a history. We go back, and this, this, that this event here was a reunion for the two of you. Uh, so I think that's very, quite, quite, quite lovely. And uh, uh, and uh, alors, j'aimerais vous uh, remercier de mon, de mon cœur, du cœur de pour pour l'expérience de de cette cette lecture parce que je trouvais vraiment, vraiment uh, uh, tout à fait. Uh, Et pas seulement émouvant, mais très, très uh, riche. Uh, um, and, and I want to say that uh, you bring together between the, with, with the two of you, between the Cree and the Wendat cultures, you bring to us so much of your, of your culture, of the experience of, 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 you know, having grown up in this culture. And, and it's very, very enriching to us to, to learn more about what we don't really know as much of, about as we should, I believe. And uh, I like the musicality that you have and, and the attention to the lyricism, lyricism and so on, uh, Andre, but and then your attention to the, the linguistic aspects uh, that you bring in as well, uh, I think so well and, and um, into, into, your, into your poetry, the language, the attention to language and detail, uh, uh, Marilyn. So thank you so much for this wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And when, now you will, you will join our, Wonderful, really outstanding gallery of poets and Santa's Adestan said poetry reading series. So thank you again. Goodbye. Merci. Merci beaucoup de nous avoir invité. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was wonderful to spend time with poets. <laughs>